Hey there, everybody. It's your girl, Bobby J here with the recap and review of Tyler Perry's comedy drama, Sisters, Season 7, Episode 10, The Good Fight. Yeah! So, before we get started with this episode, if you're new here or if you are returning and have not subscribed as of yet, please tell you a moment right now. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like, comment and share so let's get started this episode starts off with sabrina making a phone call to andy letting her know she's been taking her injections and getting her ivf and today is the day that she has her interview for the branch manager position and andy was saying that wish me luck too because today i meet with a new client that must be miss marie and she says she terrifies me so they both was like you we got it you got it great so she hangs up and andy's there with jordan and jordan comes over there and they're making out on the bed when all of a sudden the news come on letting them know where they that, that jordan has been staying at andy's house all this time and and that the girl whom uh said that he had sexually abused her or whatever. She made it up. It was false. We don't know why she did it. So Jordan's like, see how somebody could just say that and it, and everybody runs with it. And Andy's like, to be fair, you know, it's a woman and people are going to usually believe him. But remember, you're a black man in America. And so it's, it's unfair that they, you have to go through that. So, but I'm sitting there going, yeah, she didn't want to say, it. and I ran with it too and believed it automatically. So anyway, he said he didn't like lies like that and they finished making out. Then we have Zach and Fatima. Fatima's looking for her cell phone and y'all know when there's babies in the house, they take your stuff and you're looking for it and she's all over there by Michael's stuff and she's talking to the baby. Oh, you made this. This is so nice. And she's like, Zach, can you help me please? I'm trying to find my cell phone, you know, <laughs> and Zach is complaining about therapy costing so much. That's why he needs to put Michael on his insurance. That's what you have to do now. But to be honest, therapists don't always take insurance, but that's what he needs to get him on. So Fatima's like, Okay, babe, don't forget I'm coming home late tonight because I cleared. He said, no, no, you can't. I was about to go hang out with the guy. She said, no, you're going to hang out with Michael. And she left. She said, well, get a sitter or whatever and work it out. And she kissed him and went upstairs. But she told him, I was like, here we go. You think you're going to hang out? You wanted that child. You don't get to hang out with the guys anymore. Or let it shut down, mommy and daddy. That's what happens. Then we're over at the salon, and here's Karen answering the phone, and they're talking about that Roots to Riches, and she's like, we do not sell that here. You're going to have to call her directly. And Pam comes in with these two drinks, saying she overheard that Karen's having two babies, so she bought her two drinks, and Karen get on her case about ear hustle, and she said, that's what people do at hair salons, we he, ear hustle. So we are finally finding out that Pam does not have a license. Karen's telling her, you cannot sell this stuff at my salon. Get your affairs in order and get a license so you don't cause me to get sued or my salon shut down. I said, see, I knew it because they wouldn't say it. And I knew and when we know Pam, we know Pam didn't do the right thing. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, but that's how I felt. So she said, I'm an influencer. I can't be giving out my address and where I live. She was like, well, I don't care. You better influence yourself out the door, whatever, because she ain't trying to hear it. So Karen goes in the back to her office, which is very nice and spacious. And she gets that call from the doctor saying that they would like, Dr. Phillips would like her to come in and talk to her about her amniocentesis. Amniocentesis. Thank you. And she said, what's wrong? And she's like, no, the babies are fine. She just want to talk to you about it. So it's probably about the DNA on each sack. Something's going up. You know what I mean? Now over to Brookhaven Bank where Sabrina is having her interview with India. And India is letting her know that some of the staff or, or, or personnel has voiced concern and stuff. And I guess it has to do with her being arrested and she's saying how she was innocent. And Miss India said something about she's just trying to be fair. And Sabrina just started laughing, like chuckling and stuff and said, this is BS. And she said, excuse me. She said, I'm sorry, I'm not to be rude, but this is not right. Yeah, I, I thank you for giving me my job back, but it was owed to me. You know, I bust my ass for this company and blah, blah, blah. And I give you all of me. I'm the first one in. I'm the last one out. Da, 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 da. And she just laid it out. Not one time did she say, well, Paige did this and Paige did that. But Paige always talking about her. 
see? And so Sabrina went to her little spew and how she felt. And Miss India said, okay, I'll let you know, you know, but Sabrina's like, I'm not asking for a handout, but I want you to be fair to me. I was innocent and I had to endure all of that, you know, and they had the cameras. So it, that's what doesn't make sense. They had the surveillance cameras and watch Sabrina did every step she was supposed to do from the handbook. So this is some BS. She is right. Now over to the law firm with Fatima and Andy are talking and Fatima's like somebody's in a good mood and she said did you see the news this morning she said he was innocent you know and of course you know Fatima was like yeah these people always want to try you and stuff so anyway she's letting her know she's like now I could focus on Miss Marie stuff she said well speaking of her she's here she's like what she's early she said yeah so she said go ahead let her in and when she gets the door Miss Marie was right there saying I told you I don't like waiting for anybody and so she tells Fatima to disappear and stop with the ma'am and all of that stuff and then she said close the door and then she tell Andy our boy dodged a bullet and she slapped five with Andy she said that's so great talking about Jordan she said, I told you it wasn't true. Then she sat down and told her that her professionalism has come into question and that she's a loose woman. And Andy's like, uh, I don't understand what you're talking about. And then she let her know that she shouldn't ish where she eats. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, meaning don't be messing with your boss in the office. And she said, I'm not judging you, but you know, I didn't get to where I w am with just one man. You know, so she said, I had my fun back in the days too. So she did tell Andy that she is um, hiring her. She's going to be her counsel. And then she said, along with co-counsel. And she's like, co-counsel? And she started pleading her case that she's going to get her everything she's owed. She said, I want everything I'm owed and not owed. I said, oh, snap. Miss Marie said, I want it all. And she was like, okay, I can get it to you all. So she gets up to leave. And Hayden's right there at the door. And she's like, oh, boy. Like, what are you doing here? And he's like, Hayden Moss, if you don't forget, if you don't remember my name and she's like whatever and she leaves and Hayden is laughing at Andy talking about cold counsel so you eavesdropping at her door damn the doors are frosted so I don't know how they didn't see him standing out there and then they started with their little back and forth when he become managing director she's going to have a problem with him and all of this stuff that's why somebody like him doesn't need to be in that position because they don't know what to do with it they're taking revenge on people, and that's not the purpose of being in these positions. So Andy just told him to go to hell, and she walked away from him, and he stepped away, and she's like, ah, like she's pissed, you know. Anyway, so over to the juice bar, where Danny is sitting at a table with Tony's two kids, and they're playing with their video game, cell phones. They're texting and not paying attention to her. She was trying to talk to them. Um, Tony's in the bathroom, and... They're like, she finally takes their phones away from them because they were texting each other, talking about her and laughing for sure. And so she started trying to be friends with them. And then my, our friends get us toys, get us gifts, get us this and all this stuff. And she, little girl wanted her necklace and whatever else. Tony finally came out of the doggone bathroom because Danny was like, how long does it take to go to the bathroom? Especially after his kids sitting there giving demands. And so he comes over there and she's looking at uh, the little girl is looking at Danny to run that necklace and she takes it off and give it to her. Then Rich come over there and he's like, hey, Uncle Rich. And they flap, slapping high five and stuff. And he looks at Danny and says, oh, I see you got got, <laughs> you know. But what to me is how come he was sitting there all bored when Tony was talking about his kids? Those are your nieces and nephews, basically. So why wasn't you excited about it? Is it because Sabrina was joined in the conversation? So let's, let's check that, Rich. You know, let's really check it. But anyway, the kids go with Rich and leave. And Tony's like, thank you so much. And she's like, uh -huh, no, Matt, no problem and stuff. And he was like, they really love you. And she said, your kids are, they're so lovely. And then she said, no, they're demons. <laughs> said thank you because she told the truth and she told him I need my necklace back he said oh okay and she said Kreisha's gonna get Kreisha's the therapist she gonna get an earful about this and she said and you're gonna pay for the therapy session so get them ducats up you know so he was like okay but they said did you get that text from um the text from what's his name Jordan and they said guys night out so it's so funny that the guys are having a night out and the girls plan on having a night out I wonder who Tony is getting the babysitter. I guess it's going to be his auntie. 
So now we have Zach showing up to Gary's office and he's telling him, I see you know how to use your phone. You don't see that I called you 18 times. And I'm sitting there going, what are these writers doing? Because if I remember correctly, and y'all tell me down in the comments section, I know Fatima told Zach not to invest his damn money with Gary. She told him, she told him, she told him. Somebody tell me what happened here. And so he's telling him, he better give me my money, rub me my money now. And he's like, it don't work that day, that way. And I'm sure that you know, this ain't your first time investing. Oh, he goes, oh, it is your first time investing, huh? And Zach said, Gary, run me my damn money right now. And he was like, and what if I don't? Zach looked up and went, pow, and punched him in his face, knocked him to the, I said, oh, snap. It's going to be on it popping now. But then Gary's with the, all of that for that little bit of money and stuff like that. He's like, don't play with me. I will kill you. And he pulls out his gun and said, here, do it. And he said, you're nothing but a weak man that can't control you or whatever. He said he called Zach's kids bastards and he called him a bastard and said something about his father. Bottom line, Gary was really nasty towards him. And Zach said, you calling me weak? You know how much strength is taking me not to pick up that gun and do that to you? Gary wants somebody to put him out his misery because he done screwed up so bad. That's why that would help him get out of trouble. So Zach picked up the gun and removed the clip and took the bullet out the chamber. And he told Gary he wasn't even worth it and put the gun down. And at this point, Penelope walks in and said, is everything all right here? And I was like, girl, you got the worst time. And Gary says, well, Zach was just leaving and Zach left. And she was like, oh, you managed to piss off somebody else today. Why are you antagonizing him? Just leave him alone. So she was like, he said, look, I'm busy today. I don't got time for to be talking to you. She said, well, you're going to make time. Like she's so tough. You're sitting there pregnant and you're weak yourself. Stop. So now we see Andy leaving the law firm and Pam is there talking about she wants to hire her because um, she has her new business, Roots to Riches. And she said, remind me to send you a bottle or something like that because Andy's edges wasn't really good. <laughs> she was like, whatever. She told me I'm saving women's edges and their lives. I said, I hear you, Pam. Anyway, Andy tells her she's not that type of attorney. She texts her the name of an attorney named Jeremy that could help her. And she was like, okay, thank you. And she walked her out. Then it switches over to um, Sabrina. She's getting up her tray, getting together a tray with cold cuts and crackers and cheese for the, you know, the ladies coming over. When she gets a call from Maurice saying, you forgot to call me. He wanted to know if she got the job. And she said, oh, I was so busy, I forgot. And then she told him she thinks she might have lost her job because she gave Miss India a piece of her mind when she told a staff member had some concerns about my leadership abilities. And he said, it's that girl, Paige. And, you know, Sabrina kind of brushed it off, like as if she didn't know that's who it is. We know it's got to be who it is. And she said, well, anyway... She said, I, I, you know, I don't know. I do want to hear about your date later, but I got the girls coming over, so I'll talk to you later. And he's like, okay, girl. So now Zach gets home, and Fatima's there. She don't cook for him. He acting all silly, like she trying to poison him. He don't want to taste the food that she made. He finally eat it, talking about if I'm going to go out like this. She's like, boy, stop being silly. And he said, oh, it's good. It's cool, or something like that. She said, I didn't rush home and cook for you for you to say it's cool. What's wrong? And then he tell her that he went to see Gary. And she said, why did you go see Gary? Because I invested money with him at the beginning. She's like, of all people, oh, my God, I told you. I knew she had told him before. And she said, what are you? what is wrong with you? Why would you do that? So he said, I went there, asked for my money, and he wouldn't give it back to me. And I, I kind of lost it. She said, what did you do? He said, I didn't do nothing, but he pulled out a gun. I said, now, why didn't Zach tell that he punched him? He punched him first. But Zach didn't tell that part, and I don't know why he left it out. She's like, you want me to get my cousin to handle it? He's like, who, madam? He said, hell no. I got to get my money first. You know what I mean? She said, yeah, that's right. You, that's right. <laughs> I was laughing. He did say that Gary's going to get what's coming to him one day, though. So now we got Karen leaving the salon and who comes in but Trey and scares the bejesus out of her. She pulled out her mace about to spray him up and stuff. And she's like, what are you doing delivering packages this late at night? And he said he saw it in the back of his, you know, truck and he just figured he'd bring it in and stuff. And, 
And she, he's like, you got to be safe out here. She said, I'm a big girl. I'll be safe. And he was like, at least put some cameras up in here. And she said, yeah, I got a box in around here somewhere. Somebody was supposed to put them up for me, but they didn't. He said, I could put them up for you. She said, no, nah, I just hired somebody. He said, do you have a hard time accepting help from people? She said, yeah, I guess if, if, if I'm concerned about them letting me down. He said, well, I won't let you down. I could put them up for you. She's like, well, okay. She said, but let's get out of here. Go home. I got to get out of here now. And so they left. But honestly, I wasn't sure the purpose of this scene. If anybody has any idea why this scene happened, put it down in the comment section. What was the purpose of it? Did it have something to do with the surveillance cameras? Y'all let me know. Anywho, now we have Maurice and Grayson out on a date and a fan comes up. Fan comes up and it's like, oh my God, it's you. Oh my God. And Grayson was like, you got the wrong table, dude. He said, no, the throat goat. He's like, oh man, I'm a fan of yours. He said, last night when you popped out those pickles and Maurice was like, no, nope, no, nope, no pickles. No, nope, no, nope, no, no, no. Trying to stop him from saying anything. Grayson gets upset and he bounces. Really, Grayson? This is the same way you met him. How are you going to get upset? How are you going to get upset? Maurice need to cut him loose. I know he's a great guy and everything, but if he can't respect the job that you do to pay your bills, then it's too bad for him. That's how he met him. You have fans, and that's all it is. Point blank, period. So now we have Danny and Andy at Sabrina's house. They're eating the cheese and crackers. They're dancing and talking about the guys and different things about them. Then we have the guys, <laughs> Tony, Rich, and Jordan, talking about the ladies. They playing cards and, and got cigars and betting with money and all kind of stuff. And they talk about the ladies. So it was so funny that they were all talking about each other and saying different pieces of what the other one was saying. So it was cute. Then back to the ladies. Karen shows up. She's hungry. Like, where's the food? I want real food. She's looking at the cheese and crackers and stuff. I was like, I'm with you, Karen. So she picked up a phone. It must have been Sabrina's phone and started asking everybody what they want. Wings. They was like barbecue, lemon pepper, pizza, and all this stuff. And she's adding and Sabrina's looking over it like, how much is it coming to? So I'm assuming she picked up Sabrina's phone. And then she said, okay, done. Ordered. Put the phone down. Said, thanks, Brina. <laughs> I said, oh, snaps. <laughs> So anyway, so Karen is saying, I think we're all on our new journeys, you know, each one of us. And Andy's saying, I feel like we're evolving into the women we're meant to be. And Danny's saying how they, we all find as hell. And that's why the men are over there talking about us. And then Sabrina chimes in and said, I think I got fired today. <laughs> I said, poor Sabrina, because she spoke her mind. And she told him it felt so effing good to stand up for herself. And they were like, did she just whisper effing? They was like, yes, she did. <laughs> but they was like, that's that's good you did. Because Danny said, here, yeah, she got you interviewing for a job that should have been yours all the time. You know, they holding that whole robbery thing against her, and that's not fair. So they started clapping and applauding her for standing up for herself, which is, that I like that sister moment. That was great. So then Karen told them they, she had a doctor's appointment in the morning, so she had to leave. And they like, is everything okay with the baby? She said, yeah, it's just that they saw something on a sonogram or whatever, and they just wanted to talk to me about it. And they're like, okay. So then they were saying, oh, when we should all leave together. And Danny's like, so how's little Zach and Zach Quisha doing? She said, I will not be naming my kids there. That's disgusting. I was like, right? But I never saw no wings there. They was, I saw Karen eating and stuff. They show her eating, I guess, because she was supposed to be pregnant and eating a lot. But I didn't see no chicken wings or nothing there. I don't know what that is. They ordered that wasn't pizza. It looked like, still looked like some pasta. That's what it looked like to me. Maybe my eyes is bad. But anyway, it ends with dumb behind Penelope thinking she got some kind of power or strength to stand up against Gary after Andy told her he is dangerous, he's becoming unraveled, and to leave. And like I said, she starts provoking him and getting under his skin. And she's like, what did you do to her? And would her parents say the same thing? He's like, what are you doing snooping in my life? Who told you to do that? And he told her she needs to be careful what she go looking for because he's not the man to be messing with. And her dumb behind stayed there even after he told her to get the 
him out of his office. She gonna keep sitting there with her legs crossed and uncrossed and crossed the other leg. And he did some little cheap explanation about what happened with Kimberly's disappearance. And she told him she didn't believe him. And he was like, you better get the F out of here before I do something to you that I may not regret. I said, oh my God. And she just kept staring at him like she had some kind of power or backup or something. But she didn't. So he stood up and said, get the F out of my office. She said, oh, what? You going to do me like you did Kimberly Potter? I said, oh, my but Jesus, I can't believe the stupidity on this girl. So he came from behind the desk and she going to get up out the chair and stand in his face like what? What you going to do? Like she's Zach, like she could fight or something. You know what I mean? And he told her, do not say that ish again. She said, let me go, Gary, you effing murderer. I'm going to the cops. And he took her butt and threw her down on the ground. And she started crying and screaming out. <laughs> and blood was everywhere. I said, see, I ain't going to say that she deserved it. But that's what you get when you stupid. What is wrong with you? Andy told you to take me serious. And you just ignored every fiber and being in every word she freaking told you about this man. What the hell is wrong with you? I was like, oh, my God. So anyway, y'all, this is the way it ended. Y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all thought about this episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's your girl, Barbie J, saying peace.